What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I want to give you guys a very very quick update on what's going on with Tesla spying video, the QQQ and a couple of other tickers. But let me first say that I am not a financial planner so take nothing I say as financial advice and also if you guys can please check out the Weeble link which is down below and in the description. You sign up for Weeble and deposit $500 you guarantee 20 free stocks. You deposit $25,000 or more you guaranteed 75 of them and the offer ends very soon in just 11 days. Anyways, I just want to call out something very important about SPY. We have a bit of a downtrend right now. This thing had this high, tried to break through this high, triggering some stops at 500. Before, this thing ended up sinking back down. So this was a lot of manipulation that ended up playing a role in today's price action. But I just want to call out that today is April 19th. We have over uh, 1.2 million calls expiring, and we have over... Uh, 3 million puts expiring for today with a 2.45 put to call ratio. I think it's higher than that. Uh, max pain is still $500 a share. And right now we're seeing something very interesting. So SPY has this very interesting range. During the pre-market, you could see we saw this little dip and we were actually down here in the 496s. And then we hit a high of 500. So I think that there's a very good chance we might remain in this range between the high and the low from the pre-markets for the remainder of the day. Now, what's happening is SPY kind of like pushed a bit. We got a nice little pop. I called out that it might push the 500s. Then you get a rejection. Exactly what I said is what ended up happening, a pop and drop in my previous video. And now we're just kind of shuffling right now. We're just kind of shuffling in this range. And it's possible SPY dips a little bit more. It gets back into the 497s and gets bought back up again. I think it might just remain range bound for the rest of the day. Now, because max pain is at 500, there is also a possibility the market makers may manipulate things and kind of buy up the market a bit towards the end of the day. So we'll see if that happens. Uh, we're just going to wait until the final hour just to talk more about that. Otherwise, SPY is just kind of shuffling right now. It's been stuck between 497.6 and about 499 for the last uh, almost for the entire trading day, essentially, besides this one little dip we got. So we might just remain in this range. We could dip a little bit more than could get bought back up. But I just see this being our range. So look at resistance at 499.5 and then 500. Look at our support right over here at about 498. If we lose that, there's 496, uh, 497.5, excuse me. Then there's 497. So very, very tight levels on SPY. As of right now, it's just range bound. It might just remain like this for some time. For Tesla, it's building a little bit of strength. Um, this thing dipped a little bit and started to bounce during the pre-market. I did say that Tesla could pop a bit. I warned you all it might actually dip a little bit later. We didn't really get as much of a dip on Tesla. It's actually holding up better than expected. So watch this resistance at 150 to 150.5. Look at the support at 149.4 and then 149 flat. And as of right now, we're still kind of stuck in this range. We're not really doing a whole lot on Tesla. Uh, I do think there's a little bit of potential for it to go a little higher if we do break through this high right here at 150.75. If that breaks, look for 151.5. But otherwise, I don't really see the price action being that great. For the most part, it's just stuck in a very, very tight range. So we have 150.25 as resistance. Uh, and then I would say the next tight resistance is actually closer to 151.5. For support, it's around 149.36, followed by 149. If we lose 148.8, we're going to be dipping much lower. But otherwise, we're just kind of stuck in a range. It's not really doing anything too exciting. Uh, could dip a little bit, but still stuck in that range. NVIDIA, I called out that NVIDIA may pop and then drop down to 834, if not 820, if that failed us. We ended up going down to about 815. And now we're just kind of shuffling at 826. That's our resistance at the 20 EMA. If we break that, we look for 830 to 834, then 844 above that. But overall, we're still looking kind of bearish. NVIDIA is kind of on a downtrend right now. And we're going to be watching to see how well we hold around 820. If we lose 815, we could sink <coughs> excuse me, all the way down to 805. Otherwise, we're just kind of stuck right now. There is a chance it's going to dip a little bit, but it might get bought up at 815. So it might just remain in that range, but I could see a little bit of a dip coming to it as the market's showing weakness. The QQQ is showing some weakness as well. I said this thing may pop and then drop. We popped to about uh, 422.76. Then we dropped all the way down to about 418. If 418 fails us, I'm going to be watching. Well, there's 418.5 as a tight support. Then there's 418 and then 4. 17.5 if that fails us we could be sinking all the way down to about the 416 area so a lot of downs that could be coming if we lose these supports right here we have three supports worth watching uh but overall i would say that it's a very very tight range we have resistance at 420 and then we have 421 above that 
So we're still kind of stuck and we'll see how things go from here. But there is a bit of a downtrend being respected and I'm seeing some weakness on the QQQ. So watch 418.5. If the QQQ loses that, there's 418 flat coming and then 417.5 below that. And if we lose this range right over here, I do see a bigger dip coming. So I might actually redraw this as a range instead. I feel like that's going to be a lot more useful. So we'll see how things go. Uh, if the QQQ loses the support, expect a little bit of downside. So we'll watch and see if that ends up being the case. Uh, on top of all of that, uh, there is, you know, a bearish potential for this. The chart looks a little weak, so it could dip a little bit more. So watch for that on the triple Q. For Apple, Apple popped and rejected off the 20 EMA. We're going to be looking at support 165, 164.5, as well as the next level. If that fails us, we could be sinking all the way down to 164. Uh, we have resistance at 165.5. That's very close to our 20 EMA. 166, 166.5. 7.5 and then excuse me um we have 167.5 so overall i would say this is looking a bit more bearish we got a rejection up to 20 ema and we could dip a little bit from here so we'll watch and see how that goes but that's all i'm seeing on the charts from now uh let me just go over a few more we have like amazon i mentioned to everyone it might pop towards in the morning i said it might go up to about 179 to 180 then look for a rejection because once again we had this uh key level worth watching we ended up getting the rejection. Now we're just barely holding the support. We're still looking more bearish as we're approaching uh, this trend line. Look at 176 as support. If we lose this, look at 175. Resistance watch 176.8 and then 177.5. Overall, we're kind of bearish on meta. We're also on a downtrend on meta. This was actually a really, really nice short I saw. So let me actually pull up the hourly just to show you. Basically, we're in a very, very nice range on meta. Uh, notice how it's been going back and forth and back and forth. Once we hit the trend line, the top of it, we got this big rejection and we ended up coming all the way down to our support right here at 486 before we came back up. But overall, very, very nice shorts, very, very nice rejection on meta. It was very, very fun to play if you guys played that. Uh, besides that, that is it for the market for now. The VIX is still kind of, uh, it kind of pushed a little bit up to about 22. Now it's rejecting. So we'll see if the VIX gets any kind of rejection or not but that's all i'm seeing on the charts we'll see if we lose our 50 ema if it loses 8 18 points to one we could be dipping a bit it might shuffle for a little bit and then we'll see if it drops later if the market gets bought back up later on because of max pain so we'll give it some time and we'll see how things go with that being said guys there is a risk of a little bit more downside temporarily but things could change intraday uh once we get more information out and once we see what comes out with max pain at the very end of the day so we'll see if the market gets bought back up at the very end of the day and for now we could dip a little bit more on the qqq on spy and all these other tickers all right so i want to give you guys a warning about that let me also note that max pain's at 500 so maybe at the end of the day something could change i'm not going to worry for now we have many hours left for the end of the day but i'll be gone for a few hours so i'll see you guys back again until then so take care do what you have to do guys and i'll see you guys very soon thank you for listening and peace out